Hi everyone, hope you are doing great. Today we are going to discuss and spend a couple of minutes on IMS architecture. Plus we will be having a look towards the uh, UTRAM and ETS and how it is connected to the IMS and from our angle where we can see how the VOLT call flows. So we will also be uh, discussing about the uh, voice over LT and uh, video over LT in this session and we will have some of the abbreviations which are used here in this architecture plus uh, the LT, UTRAN and EPC. So let's go one by one. So starting from IMS architecture, I would say there are five important components in the IMS architecture. Initially, I would like you to see IMS, you know, as a service network. So from that angle, we'll start the discussion and then we'll be discussing how the call flow happens exactly. So starting from the I IMS architecture point of view, here's the HSS or the home location server. Here I have written all the abbreviations. So HSS, it may be an integral part of the IMS or the IP multimedia subsystem or it may be the same HSS which is used in EPC. That's why the blue colored boxes I have put here, those are optional. Like they may be in the EPC or they may be here in the IMS part. Arch for the operator's convenience. So let's say HSS where we can get, uh, you know, uh, the location information of the subscriber and subscriber information. Then the AS or the application server, which is responsible for all kind of servers, codex, AMR codex, vocoder control, and all kind of IP control functions. So that is used for that. Then three very important components are the proxy, CSCF, what is PCFCF, CSCF, P stands for proxy and CSCF stands for call state or call session control function. This is a very important and integral part of the IMS. So then the ICSCF which is nothing but interrogating CSCF and the SCSCF. This is an optional uh, entity however normally in all kind of architecture we used to see this this interrogating CSCF and S is the serving CSCF and uh, if we we'll add one more component here that is PCRF which is policy control related function or policy and charging related functions which is again a very important part of IMS to get the information uh, regarding the charging and the policies applied for the particular user from the PCRF which is connected to PDN gateway naturally and uh, these are the components if we establish a call from one network to the PSPN or the public Swiss telephone network so then we will be requiring the MCW the MGCF or you know media gateway control function and the BGCF which is nothing but uh, breakout gateway control function. So these are the uh, you know elements or components which are required if we are going out of our own network. So those are all the uh, important aspects and important uh, you know entities to discuss in IMS. Now let's have a look on the UTRAN and EPC and how exactly a VOIP call happens. So let's talk about the UTRAN. Sometimes it's referred as IP CAN from IPEC. So in the UTRAN part, or you can say this is the UTRAN part V and the E node B. If you have the MME function integrated, we can call it as the IP CAN. IP CAN is nothing but Internet Protocol Connectivity Access Network. So 
MMA is used for initial authentication and ciphering purpose or it can connect via PDN to the IMS. So that's how uh, we look at it. Secondly, the EPC, which is again is a very important part. You may connect through the UE to the inner MME and then you know EPC and then you can go to the IMS. So in EPC, what are you know entities we may have for a Volticom? One very important thing is the ACW. So, uh, the serving gateway and uh, the AAA. AAA stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. So, this entity is very important for any VOIP call. And PCRF, MME, HSS, and PZW, I have put it in blue box uh, not to be confused with this because I have used the PDN and PZW here also in a zigzag, uh, you know. Uh, manner and here the PSTN and SCW also so these are not uh, a part of the IMS but somewhere when the signaling is required that's why to, for better understanding I have put them here so these blue boxes you can for the time understand these are optional because we are talking about the IMS architecture today so PZW HSS because I have put the HSS here we can have two HSS if the operator wants one at the IMS one at the EPC Sometimes it is the same, you know, HSS. So it depends how the operator has choose the entities to be. Secondly, the MME. I have put MME here only to make you understand the IP CAN part or the Internet Protocol Connectivity Access Network, which connects to PDN to the IMS. And uh, PZW because I have put a PZW here, so that is the reason I have put it in blue box. And the PCRF, I put the PCRF here also. So it can be the same PCRF or you can have two PCRF. Normally they go, go for one PCRF, which is nothing but the uh, policy control uh, and uh, you know, policy and uh, charging uh, related functions. So that's all about all the components. I have written some more stuff. So I will go through them. Then we'll have a discussion on this IMS part and uh, uh, basic call flow of VOIP HSS home location server this one PCSCF or the proxy CSCF this one over here then we are having interrogating CSCF the second one and the serving CSCF SCSCF IP CAN internet protocol connectivity access network this thing in the box collectively UTRAN and the MME then we are having the CSCA full form which is nothing but the call state or call session control function then the DNS domain name server the PDCP packet data convergence protocol the MR adaptive multi -rate, which is used here MR codecs are used in application server then we are having PDCP packet data convergence protocol okay MR then IETF which is nothing but internet engineering task force protocol which is used in IMS basically the SIPs used in most of the signaling inside the IMS SIP is nothing but the session initiation protocol we'll have a separate session on SIP maybe after the session uh, which is responsible for control of voice in IMS network okay so this is SIP is a protocol which is basically responsible for the signaling and the flow within the IMS then the SRPCC you already know about it single radio voice call continuity when we we need a uh, handover from this PS services or IP voice to the CS services we need to adapt this SRPCC so that the call will move from PS to CS. So when PS to CS voice call handover is required, we use this function. And we are having VILT or video OLT, PSTN, public switching or public switch telephone network, which is here. When we initiate a call from IP network to, to the landline or to some other network, uh, we need to go through this entity. Uh, when you 
connect to the Santini, we need to go through the MGW, MGCF, BGCF, you know, uh, all these kind of components. Then the MGW Media Gateway, MGCF Media Gateway Control Function, which is here. And uh, when there is a voice uh, coding happens from MGW to MGCF and vice versa, we use the H248 codex or, you, or we also use the H264 codex for BOIP in LT. For 3Z, we use 324M codex. So that's for 3Z BOIP uh, and uh, you know H264 and sometimes H248 used for uh, VOIP services in LT. Then uh, the PDN gateway, which is here, the packet data network gateway, and uh, we have in BGCF, which is breakout gateway control function. Sometimes when we connect uh, to some other areas, or some other countries, we need to go through a you know breakout session or we need to communicate to other entities we need to have this entity over here and then the AAA authentication authorization and accounting which is there in the EPC and we are having UTP which is very important uh, transport protocol it doesn't send back the packets if something is lost so that's, that's the main difference between UDP and uh, the TCP. TCP acknowledges uh, the transmission and send back if some packets are uh, lost during transmission, but UDP send it all through. It doesn't uh, look uh, towards the acknowledgement. It keeps on sending the packets. So UDP, <coughs> UDP, UDP is uh, best used for, you know, uh, VOIP and uh, VI, uh, VOLT and uh, VILT, that, that means video OLT and voice OLT plus the VOIP services and TCP is uh, used basically for the data sessions like uh, surfing the internet and doing some kind of data session because there you need to have uh, uh, the acknowledgement from the other side so uh, UDP and uh, TCP then we are having the PCM uh, or the pulse code modulation I hope you know about this PCM is used here during MGW to PSTN connectivity and uh, we are having the PCRF policy, uh, policy and uh, charging related function we have the SS7 or the signaling system 7 which is used during the MGW PSTN and uh, MGCF uh, signaling transmission so uh, for any kind of signaling transmission from PSTN to and fro is done through signaling system 7 so SS7 is used here via SCW. So those are all the components and the abbreviations we just discussed. Finally, I would uh, like to uh, discuss from the uh, call initiate point of view uh, from UIP. Uh, that means the UE connects to the proxy CSCF. I will draw the signaling here. Okay, it's already there. So, when the UE initiates a call to VOIP, it should have a VOIP enabled uh, handset, first of all. Secondly, it will connect to IP CAN to PDN gateway to the PCSF which is, which is nothing but the proxy call session control function which is required for authentication and security purpose we need to know whether you are the right handset uh, your authentication and everything is checked here then we uh, you know communicate with the HSS for some parameters we confirm back yeah you are the right guy then we have the interrogating CSCF this one in interrogating we allocate uh, the DNS or the domain name server or, or IP to you to have that communication 
and uh, then we communicate uh, then we move to SCSCF which is nothing but the serving CSCF this guy which is responsible for validation of IP of the user and it's validate uh, the IP address and also it, it serve uh, that particular UE for any kind of connection request then the serving CSCF communicates with the application server application server is the end-to-end -end controller it controls all the IP uh, related function and it is having all the kind of servers integrated to it and it controls the vocoder part it also controls uh, you know we use normally the uh, AMR codec so it controls the AMR codec part also and the kind of codec we use in VOIP is uh, H264 for LTE and uh, for 3G we use 324 n codec so that's how uh, the VOIP calls uh, to from the UE via the PDM in the IMS so that's all about the IMS architecture and introduction in the next session we will be discussing and focusing only on IMS part I will not be uh, discussing the UTRAN part or the you know EPC part we will only be focusing the IMS part and the VOIP call and we will be discussing about the interfaces also and some more detail about each of these entities well that's all for today and uh, I made a mistake here this is home subscriber server actually okay so it's home location server I have written anyways that's home subscriber server this guy and uh, that's it I think everything is done I hope you don't miss the next session wherein we are coming with IMS architecture only along with all the interfaces and connectivities and detailed explanation and discussion on each of the components. So that's all for today. Uh, stay tuned for the next session. Thank you so much for watching. Do subscribe, like and share and don't forget to comment. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.